Good afternoon. I'll be sharing some of the tips for dynamic hip screw. A dynamic hip screw is a very unique implant which has stood the test of time. It allows controlled compression as fracture side and the technique is pretty standardized. Uh, you reduce the fracture, put a guide wire, then use a triple remote to rim it and then tap and put the screw and plate. Uh, it's as simple as that. But actually it involves a lot of hard work to get the real job done. So I'll be sharing few tips, maybe about six tips, which will help you tide over all these difficulties. So tip number one, you choose the right fracture, which you will fix by doing certain radial calculations like uh, do proper AP and lateral X-ray. If you're still in doubt, you can go for a traction view of X-ray in 15 degree internal rotation. You can see there is a combinated fracture X-ray without any anomaly. You can see how nicely it reduced. And select always the stable fractures that I have shown big marks. In some cases, you can also select with small posteromedial combination, but never select unstable fractures like reversal, transverse, and lateral co combination. Now comes the tip number two. Take stock of your inventory. Before you start your job, you see that if your setup is right, instruments is right, fracture table and CM is right. You should have a standard DHS set, but you should keep in reserve all the variable angles uh, angle guides from 125 to 150 degree and also the jigs for that and plates for that. So you should have some accessories, instruments like pusher, reduction forceps to reduce uh, if not reduced. So you should have a good fracture table uh, with a, uh, so that you can see the, uh, so you can manipulate the CM on this, whichever position you are comfortable can do. And CM is a must for this type of fractures. And you should see that CRM is able to you'll, uh, demonstrate unobstructively both AP and lateral whole proximal ends. Uh, nothing like a two CRM's position in 1990 degrees, it can save almost 60% of your time. Now, tip number three is the fracture reduction. This is the most important step in your uh, treatment. And if you fail here, again, go back to the uh, step one. Uh, perfect reduction leads to perfect fixation and perfect outcome. So reduction, you must reduce fracture before you scrub. It can be done by traction, abduction, and internal rotation. But remember, 25% of fractures reduced in slight external rotation, and 25% fractures don't need any abduction at all. So my trick is you always give a traction, gentle traction on neutral position. Then as you progress, check with CR, and then uh, decide whether we'll do abduction or will connect that. But always remember to avoid heavy traction because it will go into abduction and you will displace the fracture. And never do too much internal rotation because it will open up the posterior cortex and uh, you lose your reduction. If the lesser trochanter is attached to the proximal fragment and then it is flexed, abducted, and external rotated, close reduction may be uh, impossible, so think of open reduction. But don't worry, if reduction is not perfect, you can fine tune it during open reduction. So how do you know the reduction is perfect? Always look at the anterior and medial cortex. If the anterior medial cortex is in perfect alignment, your reduction is perfect. There should be no virus and posterior sac. So the pearl is in anterior medial wall reduction, which is paramount before you proceed further. Virus small reduction can be reduced with additional traction and further abduction. Posterior sac must always be reduced because uh, the, your guide wire will be placed in anterior neck and posterior of the head. So without this, you should not pro proceed further. You can use a pelvic bump, reduction clamps, and uh, maybe a crotch. Many books say uh, any techniques that you must make it straight and reduce this posterior sac. And once you reduce the fracture, then you must temporarily fix your k wire so that they again don't sag back. Then comes the tip number four, guide wire positioning. Uh, remember, this is the single most important step that will decide whether you have uh, made a perfect job of good fixation and good outcome. So it should be used with a radiolucent guide, uh, if possible, or an angle guide which is flush to the lateral cortex. And always check the position in CM before you finalize. Then comes tip number five, rimming and tapping. Remember, always use a CM to check your position during rimming and tapping. Rimming should be done over the guide wire up to 5 mm of subcondal bone. Always watch for jamming and bending of the guide wire in the uh, triple remote uh, leading to migration into the acetabulum or pull out of the guide wire while removing the remote. 
In this case, you reinsert this guide wire uh, by reverse DHS nail plate assembly like I have shown there. But remember, never splinter the lateral, uh, lateral wall. If you splinter, you are in big trouble. So for tapping, golden rule is you must tap all the, for all fractures, even if it is osteoporosis. If you don't tap, then you are in big trouble. Uh, always stabilize the proximal fragment before you tap so that the rotation strain will not displace the fractures. Always use a centering slip. So coming to tip number C, this is screw and plate insertion. This is the final act. Remember, never force the plate onto screw. So screw should always be placed in central and central position or in ferrocentral, never in anterior and superior position. I always remember the tip effect distance of gum gartner uh, to see the position of the uh, screw head. So it should be within 20 millimeter, not more than that. So ideally, you should always use a long barrel plate, but insert barrel can be used in 80 mm or less uh, screws and never force the plate on the screw. You must allow about 5 to 10, 10 mm slide. You know that you look through the hole in the barrel plate. If you see the screw, then it's okay. And always watch out uh, and never give too much compression. Always watch out for improper nail plate relationship, which occurs if you give a very short barrel and long nail. And uh, then disengagement of the screw can occur. Compression. Always impact the fracture before insertion of the plate holding the screw. Don't use too much compression. In, in osteoporotic bone, you can uh, have a screw pull out and uh, reduce your, uh, and, uh, displace your fracture. So if there is a, a lateral cortex fracture combination and posterior medial fragment, you may have an unstable fracture. If there is a lateral wall combination, always use a trochanter extension plate, or you can use a steel wire like I have done here to reduce that one. And if there is a posterior medial fragment, uh, you can fix that with a screw and then further proceed uh, with a DHS. So the take home message is assess your fracture geometry, plan well, realize your limitations, do your best. Remember, you may not always be successful. Thank you.